Believe in Everything Auburn is brought to you by Bet Online, your number one source for all sports betting needs for every season, from baseball, golf, and soccer, right to all the top fights in UFC, MMA, and boxing. Every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. And when the game's over, head on over to the online casino and get in on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of their over 150 slots games. Head to the website today to get in on the action. And we've got a promo code for you. Believe is going to get you 50% off a welcome bonus on your first deposit. That code is B-L-E-A-V. Bet online where the game starts. War Eagle, everybody. Welcome back. To believe in everything Auburn. I'm Taylor Davis. He's Jason Campbell. We're both in our orange today, really sporting <laughs> school colors. We match our logo today. So it's going to be a good show if we're starting off with uh, telepathic communication here like we do. But uh, welcome in, everybody. If you are catching us on audio like you usually do, don't forget we are on YouTube if you would prefer to watch in video format. Um, we're going to catch up a little bit on the heels of a great episode last week. And obviously we say that a lot, but I don't know about you. I got a lot of people saying like, I did not know as much about this kid. And like, I'm his biggest <laughs> fan now. Like Eugene Asante was our guest last week. If you missed the episode, please take the time to go back and at least listen to his interview. I think he's, uh, the, the kind of athlete, but the kind of person that you want leading your football program. So it was a great episode. You want to go back and, and catch it. Uh, but we'll just kind of shoot the breeze today, catch up on a few different topics, and then celebrate America. Tomorrow is the 4th of July. So we'll uh, – Jay's heading to fireworks tonight. He's getting started with the celebrations early. Well, I got to see if uh, Eugene uh, did what he's supposed to do, which was retweet and <laughs> – <laughs> <laughs> you can't put the kid on blast, Jay. Do everything on IG, so I need to have a chicken call with Eugene. So <laughs> you do that. that. Happen here very soon. Uh, <laughs> yes, and talk about fireworks. So a little fireworks story. Okay. So a couple of years ago, we tried to shoot fireworks in our neighborhood, which is kind of like a no go. But my neighbors at the end of the neighborhood was doing it, so I was just like, so all my buddies, we had about 40, 50 of us. So. Jeez. Yeah, so it was just like, hey, man, somebody's shooting fireworks. So he goes to the front. My neighbor tests me. Yeah, we're shooting fireworks. I said, well, hey, I got a ton of fireworks. Man, we come to the end of the neighborhood and shoot them. She's like, oh, yeah, y'all come on. So we go to the end of the neighborhood. Other neighbors come outside. They're lunching them all. Boom, bang. So we go over there lunching all. Boom, bang, back to back. And then also one of my, you know, you already got that one friend that just, you know, you can't contain them. Yes. So he goes and try to light something crazy. Not paying attention, got to turn towards our neighbor's house. Oh no! And the neighbor standing beside me that he likes the thing. I'm like, dude, you forgot to turn it. Thing shoots directly for the neighbor's house. Boom! Hits the front door. He hit hits it. The front door. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> I was like, uh oh. <laughs> so the oh neighbor, my gosh! So the neighbor just starts laughing. I was like, oh dude, you're laughing. He's like, oh guys, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, you know. It's fine. Nothing's damaged. There's nothing damaged. I can tell from here. Nothing's damaged. Oh, wow. Worry. My kids will pick it up tomorrow. We'll clean everything up. Y'all just have fun. We're enjoying this. We're loving it. So we're just shooting fireworks for like an hour, just back to back. Okay. And I tell you, like, it was so much of that stuff on the ground afterwards. And all my guy was like, hey, man, we'll clean all this stuff up. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. I want my kids to do something. <laughs> so let them clean all this up in the morning. Dang. So that was one story. Okay. The same week, did the, the kids same, pick it all up? Yeah, they did. They wow. It all up. Okay. The same day, <laughs> it, you know how hot asphalt gets, right? Yeah. So it's like ninety-five degrees, and it's two o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, I got two buddies that want to race each other. One is a former track guy in college okay. in his forties. The other one is a wannabe basketball player still playing in his forties. So they decided and they, they want to race naturally. Race. Y'all yeah. never grow up, literally yeah. ever. <laughs> So we all walk to the front of the neighborhood, <laughs> you know, and we and we say, okay, I'm gonna do the countdown. So I'm asking him if y'all gonna stretch. I don't need to stretch, so there's no, no stretching not. taking place. So then all of a sudden they take off running, and one of them's running, and the other one's running. All of a sudden, you just feel the hamstring just yep. one of them pull the hamstring and falls down like somebody shot him. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, see, I said that's what you get for that stretching. 
And then get this, Taylor. It was running barefooted like some crazy. No people. way. So that's what happens around here on the forest sometimes. So I say, Idiots. you know, just take it away from now. <laughs> get it out. Or <laughs> get it out. So, yes. Oh my gosh. No, men truly never grow up. Moral of the story. Yeah. It is ridiculous, but it's fun. It, it does. It sounds like fun. I, I'm not not at all surprised to hear that. Uh, but yeah, the fourth is tomorrow. It totally snuck up on me. I had uh, absolute certainty that it was on Saturday, and it in fact is on Thursday. So happy fourth, everyone. Hope you have some fun plans for the weekend, safe plans. What is your fourth of July food of choice? Are you a barbecue guy? Yeah, it's always barbecue, right? Barbecue, ribs, you know, chicken, you know, get a good hot ribs. dog, burger, you know, potato salad, baked beans, you mm. know. Uh, Pasta salad, you know, a little house salad. Um, Golly, Jay. Cake. Yeah, pound cake, little chocolate cake. Okay. Uh, you may throw in a little apple, apple pie. pie. Come on. You know, um, catfish, salmon. Um, yes. Do it up. I, it's, I feel like I've earned an invite to one of your parties <laughs> that I, I it's lost in the hey, mail, apparently. Hey, you're close. Just come on by. Because your spread is always top tier like you never skimp on food that is for uh, sure yeah i always want people to have a good time i want people to eat good feel yeah. good and just hang out in the pool you know hang out in the basketball that. court you know just don't tear an acl in basketball court don't <laughs> and up. don't shoot my neighbor's house with fireworks like right. all don't I shoot ask. House with fireworks you know <laughs> It's your own risk here, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's your own risk. So, you know, yeah, you should you should have you should have came. So you should have came. One one yeah. year I'm going to. Of course, that's like a typical like Saturday in your household. Like you always have got quite quite the menu, which I have a lot of respect for. I'm low-key not a huge barbecue gal. Like if it's I know. You're from Brown. Oh, and I lived in Kansas City, and those freaking people treat it like it is holy water. Like, barbecue is absolutely everything. So if I uttered that sentence around there, I was shunned. But I, I, I can just take it or leave it. I love ribs, and I love wings. But, like, a good hot dog to me, I would eat a hot dog at like any turn i love a hot dog yeah, so much ketchup and mustard or are you gonna put some relish on there are you gonna put just some... ketchup oh my god very just plain ketchup. just ketchup. like one of those hot dog stands in new york on the side of the street you just oh we it. have them in nashville yeah i'm a hot dog girl i do not like potato salad wow you're right not, isn't that you're weird not, you're not from alabama i you're... know i don't i love potatoes like i think it's um I think it's the pickle relish that's in it. I hate that. Keep that out. I'd probably like it. Hmm. Well, but, it all depends on that gives it a little bit of flavor, you know, but I guess you can always substitute the pickles. So Yeah, not my vibe. But nonetheless, lots of good food, fireworks, sun, and hopefully a few days off work. People that work in corporate America, I wonder how many of them are going to work on Friday. Surely majority of the country um, is not, right? Yeah, you know, I work corporate, so most of us get off on Wednesday through Sunday. Shut know. up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know yeah, I've got to be in the office, 9 a.m., conference calls, emails. Yeah, get back to me by EOD. Jason, if you ever talked like you were in corporate America, I would fall flat <laughs> out of my chair. I was actually, when I first retired from football, I got involved with – um like government contractors and all that type of stuff, right? So you go out and you and you, you know, you basically send out contracts to hire people for people. Mm -hmm. So I got tied into that with a few people, and and you know, all of a sudden we got a lot of doors really quick, but okay. we couldn't keep up with the speed. So we just ended up just letting it go uh, because it's it's a lot of work. And I just said, yep, yep, corporate America is is different. It is um, different. So then I went to the radio and TV business. And so do I get off from Wednesday through Sunday? Do I tell people from NIL, don't call me? Do I tell parents, don't yes. Call me? Do I tell kids, don't call me? Don't call me. I'm trying to sign a top five okay. class. You know, I got to ask hey, 
Hugh Freeze sure thinks we are, and I love the confidence. What was your major at Auburn? I don't know if I know that. Yeah, I started off in communications for about two years, and then public administration communication is kind of similar, so I switched to public administration, and then okay. I ended up interning with the mayor after I graduated. I graduated before my senior year, so mm -hmm. Mayor Ham at the time, I, I interned with him. I used to go out to Pat Dye's forum with him. Wow. Sit and talk, listen uh, Coach Dye tells stories about back in the day, how they used to do stuff and, you know, talk about, you know, during that season, how we had things rolling. And it was some great conversations. And, you know, I bet. That I would take from him and take back to the team and everything. And then uh, just riding around Mayor Ham, you know, just I worked with the, I asked my intern at the Chamber of Commerce. So I was the front person when you first walk into the Chamber of Commerce and people would walk in and look like, is that who I think it is? Yeah, <laughs> I recognize you. Yeah, not that I'm going to run for mayor one day, but it was pretty cool just to kind of be in that space to kind of see how things operate within a city platform. Mayor Jason Campbell. I could see it. Shoot. Hey, <laughs> we got a coach out there in political. Why, why can't I just go ahead and get it political? I, I would vote for you, Jay. You would do good work. Gracious <laughs> alive. All right. Well, speaking of good work, and you alluded to it, this recruiting class is certainly shaping up quite nicely, and it sets up for a pretty big July. Coach Freeze has been asked about it, and he said, obviously, a lot of eyes are always on July, but given the moves that we've been making and the momentum we believe we have, uh, a couple losses within the past like week, but still an incredible class already and some big targets that are still very much – uh, on the drawing board, you're you're privy to a lot of it. You're involved in so many capacities. You you touched on it a couple weeks ago when we were sitting at six, uh, only behind Georgia and Alabama in the SEC. The more you come to know about this class, what are your realistic expectations of what kind of a statement could be made, not just about their class, but about where Auburn is now? Uh, I think a lot of these guys, when they come on campus, they see Auburn, you know, they see the opportunities that it has to win a championship and compete for championships. And a lot of, of it is trying to get rid of the last, you know, three years of losing seasons right. to get them to see this is not Auburn. You know, this is the, this is what Auburn is. And then on top of that, letting them know that their class and last year's class can be the class that kind of rewrite the script. Changes everything. Totally so agree. Everything. And um, so it starts seeing them, let them see themselves in that transition phase. So for the most part of it, these guys are huge. Most of them are ready to play immediately. Um, you know, a lot of them have size already. Uh, a lot of them are, that you can tell they're Auburn guys and guys that you want that I think will stick around three, four years, not see in the portal. You know, yeah. uh, you're always going to get three or four every year in the portal just because that's just the nature of it. You know, this year, Coden Hood went in the portal. Nobody saw yeah. that. You know, so sometimes you're always going to get shot by a few of them. But, you know, that's their own decisions. That's their right. But uh, but for the most part, though, most of the guys we're getting, it's going to pay a huge, huge difference in this program. And, um, you know, this season, I expect us to have a good year, but I think the next two years is going to be an opportunity for Auburn to have some special years um, yeah. and everything. So just as a whole, the one thing the class still got to solidify is, you know, you got a quarterback last year in Walker White. Who's going to be your quarterback in this class? You know, just because, yes, Walker White was a top 10 quarterback last year that signed, but at the same time, you got to have more than one. And you you gotta, pretty much have to be getting one every year these days right. because of the portal. Because of the portal. And you have to create a competitive environment. Right. And, uh, and everything. So I, I definitely like the depth of this class. Good. And I think there's going to be some big hitters that's going to commit soon and going to come. And, uh, you know, I expect Auburn by the time we get to August to kind of be lined up as, you know, if not the fifth class, the fourth class or something. Wow. You know? um, things are, you know, things continue to take shape, but Still got a long ways to go, but overall, everyone's busting their tails to do what they got to do to help this class uh, be successful. And I know you're one of them, so uh, very exciting. If I know you mentioned the quarterback, but if there's another position group that you think is kind of high on their priority list at this point, what would it be? Well, you know, always interior linemen, right? Okay. Interior offensive linemen, interior defense linemen. Uh, you know, last year we lost uh, a lot of depth on the defensive front. Okay, right. you, go out, you go out and get Isaiah Rakes from USC. You go out and you get mm -hmm. uh, Philip Bleedy from Indiana. But, 
these guys got one year pretty much. Yeah. So Jalen McLeod's out of there this year. Uh, so you're going to lose uh, Jason Jones out of there this year. So you're going to lose a lot of guys up front, right? So you got to find guys in the class that this year they can come in. Uh, when those guys are gone, they're going to immediately be ready to play. Right. But at the same time, you got to have depth at that position. That's where we've been beat at the last two years, last uh -huh. three years, is – if you look at our front and look at other people's front, you're like, oh, it's a major difference. Yeah. You know? But I thought last year we was trending in the right direction. We got Dylan Wade. We got mm -hmm. uh, Too Tall Miller. We got Gunnar Britton. You know, all those guys. I feel like Avery Jones came in and made an immediate impact. The yeah. offense I did look a lot better last year, but I expect to be even better this year. And uh, and the size is getting bigger. You got Big Percy came from Mississippi State, mountain of a man. You know, <laughs> he moves to the left tackle. Dylan Wade now moves to the left guard. Yeah, so that makes it a strong left side and uh, blind side for the quarterback. And then, you know, front side you got Jeremiah Wright, six years experience. Two tall Miller started all year last year. Right tackle coming back for another year. And then, uh, you know, the the center position is the one that we'll see what happens. But there's so much right. great experience there from a kid last year, the true freshman. He got a lot of great playing time. Definitely. I mean, he kind of got thrown in the deep end and you either sink or swim. So good on him. But I, I think that there's still so much to be said about a high school commit. And I think with the current state of Auburn, all of these guys are taking a lot of pride in their class. And that hasn't necessarily been as much of an emphasis lately because it is very self-focused and it is very well. We'll see where my college career takes me. But Auburn's in a very unique situation where no one questions the quality of experience at Auburn. No one's questioning the resources at Auburn. I actually saw a list come out. Auburn's in the top like seven of highest revenue for college football. So like there is money, there are resources. I think it's been about who wants to take ownership of this thing. And to your point, be the classes that rewrite the narrative, but you're not going to be able to do it by yourself. So it's going to take that buy-in that you and your teammates had to look around the room at each other in the locker room and be like, this is our show. This is what we're going to change together. And if you start that your freshman year, I'm not sure you will be as inclined to try and chase something individually, especially if you start seeing the fruits of your labor and your class lives up to the hype that you all felt like it should. It feels like Hugh Freeze has made the decision that he wants to put the emphasis on that and he's finding the kids that are buying in. If they can keep that mentality is a different animal these days because once they get a little bit of the money and the fame and the status, it can change them. But where it sits right now and what they're driving as far as priorities, principles, and the reality that no one's going to be able to get this thing as insane as I believe Cam Coleman is, he can't change Auburn by himself. Right, he can't right. get this team to a national championship by himself. You keep that mentality and this coaching staff keeps recruiting guys that have that at the forefront. I agree with you. I think in the next two to three years, this is an entirely different program. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a program that, you know, people are going to want to come to. Yeah. You know, um, they'll be knocking down the door trying to commit before another big commit mm -hmm. uh, to make sure they secure a spot because right. they moves up next year. You know, a right. lot of people notice, but it's moved up to June. You know? mm -hmm. So a lot of kids going to be signing before their senior season even starts. Uh, you know, it's crazy how football is kind of in the last three years is kind of whirlwind. It's just turned around. Right. So, yeah. You think about these guys, but if you ever saw Perry Thompson in person, like you would think he's already been at SEC for three years. You yeah, know, he's, uh, he's strong, he's physical, um, and everything. So from from with that being said, with running backs that we have coming in, mm -hmm. you don't drop off. You know, you just reload. And we've yeah. been doing that for the last thirty years, right? Um, when you think about quarterbacks, has been the the kind of the hit or miss position. You know? Totally throughout the years. So if you can just find a guy that can be a three, four year starter, you know, I would say three years in this day and age, if you can get a guy that can be a three year starter, you give yourself an opportunity to win some championships, you yeah. know, compete and win one, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, look what Georgia did because Carson chose to stay. Right. Right. Exactly. So, you know, it's just, uh, having, having that this year is going to tell a lot though. This year is so the year too. before revenue sharing kicks in. So, it's a lot of questions to answer in all season. How would revenue sharing affect the NIL? Will NIL still be a presence or will everything be run through 
revenue sharing where these kids yeah. become now employees of the university where they have to fill out W-9s, where they have to be insured through the university. So um, you know, so much stuff has to um, has to take place because at that point in time, you if you were working for the university, now do you apply for workers' comp? You know, if something was to was to happen, so there's so many barriers. I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah, so so many things you have to think about when you get into the whole wow. you know, what's going to transpire in 2025 when it comes to college football. Um, you know, because you know you heard some ads that said, "Hey, they've been trying to build on their." like make their campuses, you know, the football facilities nice. They try to make the baseball yeah. facilities nice, the basketball facilities nice. Okay, now that revenue sharing has hit the front door. How do you how do you now, you know, because a lot of this money is gonna have to take care of the sports, athletics. Mm -hmm. So how do you now differentiate so much of this money to to take care of the building funds? So you heard uh Mr. Cohen come out and say uh, the other day that, you know, economically Will we be able to keep Thanks. on pace with yeah. all the deals that we have on the table? So right. something's got to give and something's going to gain. That's just the process that we're in. But right now, there's a lot for people to think about as we enter into the, the new SEC, which is already here in two other names. We haven't got these two names implemented in Texas and yep. Florida State and Clemson. So insane. <laughs> I don't even want to freaking go down that road. Uh Oklahoma and Texas are officially part of the SEC now. That happened uh, officially July 1st. So they are now part of the gang. The SEC expands to 16 members. And I wanted your take on which one you think is going to have a ruder awakening joining mm -hmm. the SEC. Well, Texas is considered, you know, everything big in Texas, right? So. Mm -hmm. They don't feel like anything that they do is kind of like the Cowboys, right? And it doesn't matter who they're playing. Everyone expects yeah. the Cowboys to win the Super Bowl every year, right? There's so, a little delusion there. Yeah, so mm -hmm. Texas is almost like the same way, you know, where <laughs> they just expect to win no matter who they're playing and where they're playing at. Right. And, yeah, I think what helps Texas is Sarkeesian, you know. He's totally. in the conference and he's had success he's been part of a championship in the conference so he knows what to expect so he knows how to prepare his team for this conference mm -hmm. um, so that helps them and they played Bama the last two years so right. you've already played the top dog in the conference Oh, well, you can't say that because georgia been the top dog the last two years but you but you played one of the top dogs in yeah. the conference for the past two years so you've been challenged and you know what it's like to have to go on the road and win in a hostile environment mm -hmm. and what it's like to have to try to, you know, hold teams off at home. Oklahoma, to me, I think they're going about it the right way. They're quiet about it. They're mm -hmm. just easing into this thing. But at the same time, they know they have to be because they haven't had a lot of noise the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. you know, and they don't want to be putting bulletin board material out there for people to come at them when they're just trying to enter into the conference. Right. Um, so I, I just think that the Oklahoma Auburn game is going to be a huge game for Auburn and a huge game for Oklahoma. Um, that's and, their first road game in the sec. It's their first road game in the sec and it's Auburn's first big game in its first five games of the season. That's at home. So if all the but conference yeah. wise, yeah, Cal I mean, we can't treat it like that because if we slip right. up and lose that game, the whole season looks a little different. Right. Like you got to win Cal, right? You got to win Cal. To get, to get the playoff implication, you got to beat Oklahoma at home. Totally. You know, so you beat Oklahoma at home. Now, if you're sitting 5-0, and you're probably ranked in the top 15. With a conference win, yeah. Right. You're probably ranked in the top 15 at that time. And, you know, and that prepares you better when you get ready to go on the road to Missouri and on the road to Kentucky. So – that's almost like a, a game that you uh, you have to circle. But like I say, Cal is that game that's caught in between, right? So, right. To your point, I agree. I think that Oklahoma's perception of this is going to be a challenge and like we're excited for the challenge, but we know what it is and the SEC is tough. Whereas Texas comes into it like we've been through hard. I don't know. Their perception makes me think that it will actually rattle them a little bit more. I also think that people will want to beat Texas more than Oklahoma. Like people are already annoyed <laughs> with Texas. Well, people want to. People already are saying they want to visit 
Austin, the stadium. Yeah. Know? So people Why saying, wouldn't you? Yeah, they're saying, look, we play Austin on a Saturday. They want to go out on a Thursday. You know, they want to go out and like, actually, I'm probably one of those people. Um, you know, go out there and spend a couple of days. Uh, just yeah, to, Austin's great. Yeah. But if you look at Texas' schedule this year, That's, right? I just pulled them up too. Let's talk about it. Um, first game, play Colorado State at home. Yep, right, they'll win that one. Next game is at Michigan. Tough. That's tough. Yeah, go to Michigan, and then Who you the have, heck scheduled that. <laughs> right, and they got Texas San Antonio at home. They'll win that one. They got Louisiana Monroe. So they got two games in a row after they play the first two games. Yeah. And then Mississippi State at becomes home. the first SEC game that's at home. And Mississippi State has a whole new coaching staff, everything. So we don't know what to expect there. Right. And then you got the Red River rivalry, which is and always great. Which is always great. And then you got Georgia. <laughs> so God, I wish they really were good. going to Georgia. Yeah. This still is not looking easy, but Georgia goes to Texas. That's I still like, I still like Georgia in that game. I do too. I mean, uh, Everybody's picking Georgia right now for everything, but yeah. I I like them in that matchup. Uh, you got an experienced quarterback going to a hostile environment. Nothing's new, you know. If it Nothing was still, new. Yeah, yeah. If it was the way around. After that, you got Vanderbilt. Okay. Wow. And, <laughs> and you got Florida goes to Texas. That's a win, but Florida you're telling me their first road SEC environment is going to be freaking Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt. That's such a crock of <laughs> crap. That shouldn't even count. Hey, in Vanderbilt's new renovated stadium, though. Hopefully it's done. It still looks a mess right now, but. Oh, and then they got, yeah, I said Florida and then Kentucky. Florida at home. Oh. At oh, least put them in the swamp. This oh, sucks. Man. All right, then they go to Texas A and M. So they really now so, that one. Their only tough road SEC environment is going to be A and M. Yeah, so I just you know they got a great shot. So if they don't play Bama. They don't play. They play Georgia. They don't play Auburn. They don't play LSU. They don't play Ole Miss. Uh, Meanwhile, let's look at Oklahoma's home versus. Now they do have several home games to start out the season. Home against Temple, Houston, Tulane. Tennessee is their first SEC matchup. That will be a tough game, but they're in Norman. Yeah, first road fun. game at Auburn. Yeah. Then the yeah. Red River rivalry, which is a uh, neutral site, it says. Dallas. Yeah, yeah Dallas. That's where they playing it at. Yeah. And then home versus South Carolina. They go to Ole Miss. Home against Maine at Missouri. Home against Bama at LSU. Oklahoma's schedule is a lot way tougher. tougher. Yeah, they go to LSU, gauntlet. They go to Ole Miss, Missouri, gauntlet. They go to Ole Miss, gauntlet. They come to Auburn, gauntlet. So yeah, that's a fair that representation of joining the SEC. Texas right. is getting a good end of the bargain. I test and not play at LSU when they that close. I know. Yeah, I I don't love that. Now them play one of their non conference games being at Michigan sucks. That's a playoff game. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a playoff. Of course, game. I don't really know what Michigan's going to look like. They had a lot of turnover and Harbaugh left. So, well, anytime you have turnover, offensive they'll still be pretty good. Uh, no, 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 no. They got a new quarterback. Forgot quarterback's gone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, running backs gone. So yeah, we have no idea what they're going to look like this year. So yeah. that's a tough game for Texas, though, because you have no idea. And it's early. It's early. So you don't know because, you know, Michigan's not going to throw everything out there in the first game. So they're no. going to dial up some stuff for the second game. But I like it. I love it. It's uh, interesting. It's going to be weird. us not playing Ole Miss or LSU or Mississippi State this year. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it so freaking much. A yeah. lot of like the classic matchups, even uh, separate from Auburn, like this. Yeah. This shuffle is going to take a lot of getting used to. But nonetheless, welcome, Oklahoma and Texas. You're going to love it. You're going to hate it. But it's going to be entertaining. So here we go. I love um, baseball, too. Baseball, softball, gymnastics, like Oklahoma gymnastics and LSU gymnastics has become a big rivalry, like multi-sports. This is, this is good for all involved. It's just uh, going to, you know. They get harder, but also the rich get richer, and that's just the reality of life. Uh, one thing I did want to mention real quick, football, and then uh, we'll get to my final topic. 
Uh, unfortunately, defensive back Tyler Scott is out for the season. He just suffered an ACL injury during summer workouts. Hugh Freeze oh. officially announced we will be without him for the 2024 season. A guy that played in four games last season, dabbled in the transfer portal, but opted to remain at Auburn. Also prominent because, like you mentioned earlier, we lost Colton Hood. He transferred to Colorado after the spring game unexpectedly. Now, we did kind of add a little bit with the Colorado transfer DB and Jaquez Robinson in June, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on as fall camp continues. Hopefully, a couple other guys that will step up in that regard. And then the other news I wanted to talk about, former Auburn gymnast Suni Lee has officially clinched her spot and will be competing in the Olympics her second after, of course, winning gold in the all-around in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. She will be heading to Paris as part of Team USA for the 2024 Olympics. So incredibly excited for her, proud of her and everything that she has accomplished. If you aren't super familiar with her story toward the end of her College career at Auburn, she was actually dealing with a very serious kidney disease and was unable to compete or practice or train at all. Um, she was pretty substantially sick, and they were not sure that this was even in the cards for her. So to have come back the way she did and be one of the pillars, along with Simone Biles, competing for Team USA once again is no small feat. So super excited for her, and uh, we'll be supporting her all the way. Did you watch any of the Olympic trials this week? Oh, did I? Did I? I? Just so American. I am a sport. Yeah, I watched all <laughs> of it. Like track and field is my favorite uh, during this time of the year. I tell you, man, like just watching the track is fun. And then I did watch the gymnastics. The one thing, though, the U.S. men's team mm. looked, like, looked like a bunch of bandits. And the reason I, like, I just say that because everybody had on knee braces and, you know, and just different things. I was just like, Bro, if you got to wear that to go out here and, and do some gymnastics. You might need to stay home. Like, you got all knee out there. You know? so, I just like, you can't go with the parents with knee braces on and, you know, and elbow pads. The sport ain't for the week, dude. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, gee, when you look at the women, they got no knee braces on. They got no knee pads on. You know what I'm saying? They out there getting it in. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, I'm just like what's, what's up with the men? Yeah, what's babies. Up with bunch, of, bunch of babies. Dang. What is interesting and sad the so the gymnastics process is actually like a long time they have several meets before olympic trials that are also kind of used as an evaluation form and there were three athletes that have been you know on people's mock lists and have been prominent in the elite circuit all three of them tore their achilles before trials so this team actually looks a lot different than people expected to because injuries were happening right there. So maybe everybody got a little scared and we're like, okay, I'm actually going to wear the brace and the wrap and the, because people were dropping like flies. Yeah, that's that sucks, man. Because you train yeah. for three Your years. Your whole life. You no, gymnastics, years. you start when you're two and most of them wow. are homeschooled and literally sacrifice everything for a one-time shot at the Olympics. Yeah. yeah, my heart goes out to them because as a competitor, you know, just like the girl I was watching track that they expected to win the, the 800 meters, right? And she gets the last, well, before she even gets to the last turn, the, you know, she gets she trips up or gets tripped up. Yeah. All of a sudden, you just got to get up and finish the race, but knowing yeah. you're not qualifying and yeah. you got all this training and especially when you're expected to win it. like. Yes. You know, that's that's the heartbreaker. So my heart goes out to all these uh, ladies and guys who's training. Uh, the Olympics should be fun, should be epic. Yeah, uh, I uh, love the Olympics. Watched it. And, uh, you know, and hey, it's a lot going on right now. You got soccer championships going on. Yeah, it's a lot going on. Like, uh, I can't keep up. My TV can't keep up. It's frozen. No kidding. If you would have been an Olympian, not uh -huh. basketball, not any of your typical sports, what would it have been? Shoot. <laughs> Tell you what. <laughs> I need two of them. Okay. Golly. I would have been so confident. I would have been on a 400 meters. Okay. Like that one lap around. Solid. <laughs> solid. I'm solid for that one lap. You know. <laughs> when I was in you got long grade. legs. You'll be fine. Yeah, when I was in the eighth grade, I was on the, the relay team okay. for the, the full lap. 
and I got the baton last. And the person mm-hmm. that was in front of me had a 40 yard lead on me. And I, and, and another got him. by 25, I walked them down and Dang. beat them right, right at the end. <laughs> I beat them right at the end. And as soon as I passed the line, I just fell. My hamstrings were shot. My glutes were shot. Oh my gosh. Just sit down for like an hour. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, I got us the victory though. You know what nice. I'm saying? So 400 meters would have been my thing. Cake. Um, Nets would have been triple jump. Oh. I mean, long jump, long jump. I was about to say, what the frick yeah, is yeah, yeah. a triple? Yeah, my mind was so long weird. jump. Okay, yeah. I mean, didn't you have to do that? In no, you have to just do vertical at the combine. Yeah, vertical, vertical at the combine. So I was like a thirty-nine inch vertical. Okay, you know? so I would have long jump really good. So that was <laughs> that would have been my two things. And uh, shoot, you know, I'd have been I, I've been training for this too. Oh man. So much gold, only gold. I wish they had 40 plus Olympics, but it wouldn't help me. My, my left, my it left sounds finger. like you're hosting them in your freaking neighborhood when your friends get together. Hey, I, I, I try to, hey, Taylor, I try to get in sack races. I say, <laughs> hey, who want to get in sack races? You know, I'm giving out surprises, you know, for the winter sack races. Honestly, those are always fun. Three legged yeah. race, you can't yeah. beat it. Yeah, all the stuff, cornhole, yeah. you know. Cornhole challenge, win cornhole, win a prize. Have you, know. you ever played Can Jam? Do you know yes, that one? Yes, yes. We played that at my parents' house recently. It's so yeah. fun. Yeah. So I like to play all this stuff. And okay. so you come to the house, you're gonna get challenged. So okay. you gotta know how to play spades. You know, love, you know play spades. love playing okay. spades. So you gotta yeah. know how to play spades. You can't embarrass the neighborhood in spades. Of course not. Of course not. Um, you know, the one thing that's really hard for people that we would never do here is what's that thing where they have the long thing you got to try to wiggle it up under so i'm limbo done limbo i'm done at limbo at five feet because <laughs> you know with this with this knee it is hard for me to even like i just like man you know what y'all got it this, this the long thing you gotta wiggle under jason <laughs> limbo. Don't, give, don't give me anything to wiggle under <laughs> you know now I got you there. Granted, I'm five four, so I'm close to the ground as it is, but I can handle limbo. Yeah. Got you covered. I'll leave the racing and the uh the uh long jump up to you. Yeah. Was that in the Winter Olympics where they slide the thing across the ice and like clear it as it goes? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, um what the heck is that I called? Talking about, but I would want to be on the bobsled team. Oh, now bobsled. That would be dope. Yeah, I want to be on a bobsled team. And people keep trying to talk me into going skiing. It's only one problem with that. If I'm going downhill really? at 250 pounds, well, I'm not 250, 235 <laughs> yeah. pounds. Come if I'm going downhill at 235 pounds, how do I stop myself without tumbling another 40 feet down? Mm-hmm. The- you got a pizza. You got a pizza, got the skis. Yeah. You, I, I wouldn't encourage it personally. You got, you got knee problems. I'm like the bandits on the, the gymnastics. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you're being held together by duct tape. Yeah, just trying to 400 move. meters with a left brace on and doing the <laughs> long jump. <laughs> so it wouldn't matter. Can you water ski? I did do it. I did pretty good. I did. I got about. I got about 50 yards. Oh, well, that's it took common. me a little bit to figure out that you got to go opposite the way that the boat goes mm-hmm. with your weight. So you got to swing your weight. Yeah. But once I figured that out, I was riding. I was, you. I was, <laughs> I was, I was popping. Then maybe you would. I mean, you don't really have to stop with water skiing, though. I, I see your concern. Of yeah, course, when you get to the bottom of this hill on snow, there's usually like a flat area for your speed to chill out. So it, yeah, you'd I, be I, all right. It's not happening, but for me, probably good. You you got a family now. Like, there's too much to live for. I can't even jet ski in the lake anymore because of alligators. I can't even go to the ocean and go above knee high sharks. Sharks. Wait, there's alligators in the lake. Yeah, you know you got gators in the lake. You are scared to jet ski. It's gators in the lake now. What do you think he gonna get up on there with you? Yeah, people sneaking out, throwing gators in the lake at nighttime. And then as soon as I fall off that jet ski and something nibble on the bottom of my well, feet. Well, don't drive like a moron and fall off. Hey, 
hey, if something nibble on the bottom of my feet, it's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> This is a wrap. <laughs> like, I gotta see. I, I gotta see. Think the question at the wall. Boom, boom, oh boom. <laughs> I think they'd leave you alone on a jet ski, but sure, whatever you say, Jay. All right, peeps. Well, that is gonna do it. We will send you into your holiday weekend. Happy Independence Day. Proud to be an American. Proud to be an Auburn fan. Proud to host this podcast with my dude, J. Cam. Everyone have a very happy, healthy weekend. Stay safe. If you're going on the lake, do not drink and drive. Be smart uh, and watch your surroundings. And that is a testament to how old I'm getting that I think about things like that. But I do. Uh, and everyone, uh, make sure you come on back next week. Next week will be, or the next one or two episodes will be our last one for a little bit before your girl goes on her European vacay and Jay continues to fight the good fight and do good things for Auburn. So if you are not subscribed already, go ahead and do that so that you get a notification whenever we release an episode and so you won't miss it as our summer schedules continue to be a little chaotic. It's the best way to do it. So uh, you can find us in the uh, iPod. What? You can find us in the Apple podcast. On Apple, you can find us on TuneIn. TuneIn? Uh, YouTube, yes. What is TuneIn? Oh, that's what I see on the thing here. TuneIn, Music, Heart, iHeart. What's that? iHeart, Spotify. Oh, iHeart, yeah. I forget. We have these cute little logos now, which if you're on YouTube, you can see the icons on is our it, screen. Is it free subscription? Yeah. We're always I, free. I don't make no money. That's why we're poor. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, we gotta now. change that. Frick. All <laughs> right, people. Up. We're getting delusional at this point. Everyone have a good weekend. We will talk next week. War Eagle. War Eagle, everybody. Have safe trips. Peace.